With me now to break this down further is the independent statistician and political commentator Jamie Jenkins. Jamie, I've been seeing on Twitter and elsewhere that you've been crunching the numbers on this. Can we actually draw any conclusions or are those blaming lockdown getting a little bit ahead of themselves? Yeah, good afternoon, Emily. I think um, when we talk about is the lockdowns killing more than COVID itself? I think what people are considering there is kind of the more recent weeks that we've been seeing across the country. We're not talking about since the start of the pandemic. We've had huge numbers of COVID deaths in that first wave of COVID and then at the back end of kind of 2020 going into 2021. Um, and what we're seeing, I've been looking at the numbers and I've been tweeting about them for, for several months myself, is that what you can do when you get excess deaths, you compare the number of deaths you see in the country now to what we were seeing pre-pandemic. And actually, uh, I've been looking at it over the last 24 hours. And, and what we actually have got is that we've got an aging population across the, the UK as well. So we've got more older people than what we had pre-pandemic as well. So what that means is that because you've got more older people, if the death rates were exactly the same, you would expect more deaths. And, and I reckon we probably should be expecting at least about 880 more deaths than what you would have had before the pandemic, just because we've got a lot more older people in particular. A large cohort were born after the Second World War, and they're now hitting the ages of like 76, 77. So, so it's not surprising we've got more deaths. Now, what you can do also do there, though, Emily, is look at what deaths you would expect to see by looking at the death rates. And it's quite clear that at the moment, for the last 10, 11 weeks, whilst the NHS has had an A&E crisis, we've had ambulances stuck outside of hospital, we are seeing more deaths than we would expect. And this is predominantly in people aged 30 to 59. And, and we can look at some of the causes of all of this. And it's linked to kind of heart problems, so heart attacks, strokes diabetes, so perhaps diabetes checks haven't been happening. So there is some strong evidence that we are seeing over the last two or three months people dying, and that could be because they've stayed away from the NHS over the last couple of years, and that's caught up now, and, and sadly they're dying. Do you have any idea, or can you predict, or have you seen any, any information about how the current issues within the NHS might impact death rates? Because we're seeing waiting lists reaching the IFS has said they could reach 14 million um, by next year, I think is what they've said. Um, you know, we see deferred treatments, as you've mentioned, misdiagnoses. Do we have an idea of what the impact might be further down the line, even if it's not to blame for the excess deaths right now? So I think we, we probably are getting some of the excess right now because of the problems in the NHS. We've got about 13,000 patients in English hospitals now who are in beds who are fit to discharge, but we don't have the, the care in the community for them to leave. What that means is that people who are in accident emergency, they can't then be moved to the more general hospital. And that then means that there's no beds in A&E. And then you get ambulances turning up and they can't discharge the patient into the hospital. And you're getting stories now of patients in ambulances outside hospitals. So then say you'll have that heart attack outside then in the community, you phone for an ambulance and there's fewer ambulances for you. And we know if you don't get to the hospital quick enough, you are going to die. So I think the current system is probably causing a lot of these over expectation, over the number of deaths over what you'd expect. Now, Longer term, we are seeing increased waiting lists. Remember, a lot of those are for minor things. So people looking for hip operations, things are not going to be critically going to be looking at killing people immediately. But there's going to be those issues, I think, Emily, around people who've missed that cancer diagnosis. Mm. If we've missed cancer diagnosis and that doesn't happen until quite late, people will be dying because of that. So I think, you know, the Department of Health have called for an investigation on all of this. I think we do need to fully understand this so we don't make the same mistakes in the future of what we've done in the past. Yeah, and it's not just misdiagnoses, is it? Because yesterday I was talking about some of the, well, pretty devastating statistics about the misuse of alcohol and the misuse of drugs during the pandemic and the number of people who may have been heavy drinkers to begin with, but then it spiralled as a result of solitary drinking, being locked in your home. It's hardly surprising that problem drinkers then, you know, um, drank more because of the hideous situation that we all we're in. That's the sort of thing that will take time to feed through, but really could be devastating for social care services as well as uh, as well as hospitals. No, indeed, we we've seen kind of the, looking at the levels of harmful drinking through the pandemic that has gone up with the pubs being closed. People might think, well, surely it would have gone down. And and people who were kind of light drinkers, they did cut their intake, but those kind of 
people who are more moderate to heavy drinkers, they increase their alcohol intake. It's a lot easier to go to the kitchen, go to the fridge and pour a very large glass of wine or some more spirits. And we did see that. You're not immediately going to probably see the effects in the, the immediate year or so afterwards. Longer term, this will build up in terms of issues. We are starting to see that impact as well which is exactly what you said. So I think the, you know, the harms of locking down and not just the lockdown itself, we were told to stay at home, protect the NHS. There's calls already to not go to A&E in, in this winter unless you really need to see it. And the government constantly saying, avoid the NHS, stay at home. People are doing that. They're not getting seen and they can't diagnose themselves. They've got to see somebody. And ultimately the NHS is not fit for purpose. It hasn't got the capacity to cope. And we're going to end up to another crisis this winter, like we were pre-pandemic every single winter as well. Thank you very much, Jamie. That was really, really informative. I'm sure people at home found that very insightful and useful to go through the stats like that.